Welcome, welcome. This is fasting class. Can you hear me? Now the camera is wrong again. Is it good like this, Andy? Is the camera good like this or no? Okay, let me, all right. So I've been seeing everybody talking about fasting. So I decided it was time to have another fasting class. So I'm gonna be reading from a lot of my own notes that I took about fasting. So the reason why, no, matter of fact, for, let's get into the, the nitty gritty and the most complicated, the most simplified but complicated part. What is fasting? Fasting is essentially you connecting to source, God, whatever you wanna call it. When you fast, it's a process of abstaining telling yourself no i don't want this i i chose this to do this right and that can come in different ways shape or form so when you're abstaining from something you're saying no you don't always got to say fast all the time because sometimes when you say that to yourself it can really it can really overcomplicate things everybody i want everybody to answer this question to themselves when you're having fun and really enjoying life and you could be like outside or something right or doing one of your one of your most pleasurable things besides cooking right you're not thinking about food you're not when you're really at like a really high level of play and just having fun and bliss you're not thinking about food so it's safe to say um you could call your fast the fastest state your natural state so you don't even got to use the word fasted because that just overcomplicates the mind sometimes. So you can just be like, I'm in my natural state for a day. You don't need anything. You only need that connection with source. The different types of fast, I like to note. Intermediate fasting. Intermediate fasting can, there's two ways you can intermediate fast. Intermediate fast, you choose one time, eat during the day, or you choose to eat in increments of time throughout the day. So there's two types of intermediate fasting. So sometimes people usually like to um usually like to do intermediate fasting where they pick a specific time where they eat a couple different meals in one day. Um the intermediate fasting that I tend to do is like when I eat probably like one good meal a day and then I'll just keep it going for the rest of the day. That's the most common type of fasting that everyone does. The second type of fasting that's more prevalent and known is water fasting. Water fasting is just when you get those hunger cravings and those symptoms them, your body asking for that stimulation in that way from food, you drink water instead and continue that. And I, I personally recommend a lot of water fast to people depending on who you are. You can ask, I can, I'm, I'm intuitive. So I can probably tap in and see what fast probably benefits you the most and with like with the level you're at. I, I noticed that water fasting it's much easier to do because every time you get hungry, you can drink water. Intermediate fasting, water fasting, and now we're going to get to the different type, another fasting. I like to call fruit fasting. Fruit fasting is another way, you, a great way you can fast too. And if you still want that stimulation of food and that chewing, that stimulation from chewing and that, that throat stimulation, you can go to fruit. Fruit fasting. Fruit fasting it can be very beneficial, especially if you're someone that tends to eat on the more denser side of food of life. And there's not really no wrong way how to eat. It's your lifestyle. How, you, how consistently are you doing other things in your lifestyle? Don't ever beat yourself up about, oh, I'm on a fruit fast. And then that one day you decided to, your family wanted to go out to eat and you went out to eat with them. Don't beat yourself up. Beat yourself up and, and not say to yourself, oh, I'm doing this for self-love. And next time I can go go all the way, you know? Don't beat yourself up about it because it's a self-love journey at the end of the day. You can hurt yourself more by having negative thoughts about eating something that's not so good for you than actually the food itself. That negative thought, so basically another way I could say this, alkalinity is like really good. So love is alkalinity and alkalinity longevity. So everybody can research this up. Um, there's a, I'm gonna show you guys a picture in a second, but there's something called, there's a um, Nobel, Nobel Prize winner that has said something like this. Alkalinity, no disease ever can survive in the state of alkalinity. And alkalinity is basically on the pH spectrum is more higher than the acidic, something that's acidic. Our blood is mainly alkaline, is more alkaline. And if you go with that type of thinking, right? Love is alkaline. Love is healing. Laughter is alkaline, is healing. You don't have to do so much transmutation for it to feel good. So on anger, on the other hand, anger is not healing, it's acidic. So one day of anger can do more damage than two weeks of eating junk food or, you know, 
the anger, the emotion, the, the emotions that that actually can hurt our nervous systems. Laughter and love to benefit your your um your nervous system and actually have you having better fast. So when you do end up messing up on your fast. Do not beat yourself up. It's a self-love journey. So if anything you're going to remember from this class, it's a self-love journey. Do not beat yourself up if you can't complete your fast the way you initially said so. So I'm giving an example again. I said, I'm a fast, dry fast. You did something extreme. We said, I'm going I'm to do a two-month fruit fast. You haven't even did two days. So let's be real with yourself. You got to be real with yourself. You got to trust yourself and keep it real with yourself. So if you have never did two days fruit fasting, don't tell yourself you're going to do a month. Because you're going to make yourself disappointed and you're going to be upset and you're going to be angry. And then now, guess what happened? When that happens, when that happens, right, when you're upset and angry with yourself about um, not completing your two-month fruit fast, could you set an expectation for yourself that's not based in reality and your reality, not, not everybody else's reality? I'm talking about you. You got to get real with you because this is the person you're dealing with. If you have never did two days fruit fasting, don't set a goal for yourself for two months, unless you're a person that do extreme things like that. But if you're not, don't do it. Don't say that to yourself because you're gonna make yourself overcomplicated and be hurt and upset when you don't achieve that goal. And that can actually do more negative of things than healing things for your fast. So be honest with yourself. So if you want to challenge yourself and be like, I want to do three day fruit fast and you never did it before, that would be a challenge. Or a, just a day could be a challenge for some people. You got to know where you're at and progress from there. All right. So the next fasting I would say is raw. Raw fast. Raw fasting consists of eating raw foods. You do not cook on a raw fast. And you can get very creative. So please don't be a person that thinks, oh, I'm just going to be eating salads. No, you can make soup. You can you can get real creative on raw fast, like real creative. Like me, I eat a like when I'm on raw, like I mainly eat raw now. But when I was still doing raw fast, I would do, oh, I only eat dates, cashews. I made a lot of soup different types of soup. And soup, I could say soup is somewhat raw because you're only putting water to it. You're not cooking it in like boiling, boiling hot water. For me, when I do raw and I do soups, I do a light, like a light, um, a light um, heated water. I don't go boiling the water, like making pasta and stuff, no. Like a soup, an actual soup. And I'm not putting any, I'm not actually putting fire to the soup. I'm, I'm boiling, if anything, I'm cooking, I'm making the water hotter, that's it. And that's not really cooking the food. Cooking the food is putting heat to that food. And when you put heat to your food, you're changing up the chemistry of your food and your body has to digest it in a different way. So just think about raw foods. What can you eat raw? You can make salsa and make, you can make salsa and you can make a uh, guacamole and make a salad bowl. I'm just giving you an example. This is one of the things I do. I make uh, I make a, a Spanish salad bowl. You, you can get creative with raw. So don't don't put yourself in the box when you're doing this stuff. And you can search up different things you can do. Like I actually made raw sushi the other day. It was really good. Really simple too. Raw sushi. We overcomplicate things most of the time. And the last one, the last one I want to talk about. Nah, the two uh, two more. Liquid fasting. That means you're only drinking liquids for a certain period of time. It doesn't have to be water. It can be water, though. It can be water, smoothies, juices. That can be considered a liquid fast because you're not consuming any solids. That's a different different type of fast. Because you're not consuming any solids, your body breaks it down faster. So that's, a, that's another type of fast that we all can do. So... When it comes to fasting, don't overcomplicate it. Get simple. So if you're a person that never fasted for one day before and you don't trust yourself to fast for a couple hours and see like, oh, I think I can do this for one day. And then once you get to one day and you do that consistently, like, oh, you do it for a couple weeks. So that'd be one day out of, or you can do it every, every one time a month. You can get, just get intentional with yourself and trust yourself. So um, get intentional and trust yourself when it comes to fasting. Oh, let me look at the comment. I mean, not the comments. I had um, some quinoa in there, some some avocado, celery. That was in my sushi. And soup, see soup? You can literally go on a soup fast. If you guys want a recommendation for a fast that might be resonant with you, and I'm able to channel your spirit team, they could probably tell me like which one would be a little bit more resonant for you. And the duration depends on you. I'm not going to tell you how long to do it. But I can tell you like, oh, your spirit team would think well, this would be better for you or this might not be better for you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been stepping into my higher self and embodying him. Um, all right.
So dry fasting, okay, that's liquid fasting. That can be soup, water, uh, juices, smoothies, nut, nothing you could, nothing solid, nothing solid. Tea, don't forget about tea. Don't forget about tea. It's fruit for you, corn. You already know that. You already knew that though. You already knew it. All right. So dry fasting. Dry fasting is is the probably the most the most powerful thing that you can do. But again, the more the more intense the fast, the detox symptoms and the detoxing of the emotion. It will come. So you gotta remember when you fast, the detoxification can come, and you have to be prepared for it. So when you when you fast and it's your first time fast, you might get symptoms like you got a runny nose or something like you're sick. No, 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 no. You are not sick. Please remember, this is your health being stimulated. Your sickness is stimulating your health. Can somebody write this down? Whatever your sickness is, is stimulating your health. When you're when you're doing self love practices like fasting. And you feel like you're getting sick? Nuh-uh. You're not getting sick. Your sickness is stimulating your health. Don't forget this. When you're fasting, you're sick and you start feeling, oh, my lungs, I'm starting to cough up mucus or something. Or my nose started running. Your sickness is stimulating the health. Yeah, and I just said it too. I'm getting mad telepathic, yo. But <laughs> your sickness is stimulating your health. Andy, are you recording? I already started cooking, bro. So when you fast... All right, so wait, all right, let me wait for the train to pass. If y'all can hear the train in the background. Your sickness is stimulating your health. So when I went on a fast, right, and I seen, um, actually, my girlfriend went on a fast, right? She literally was purging emotion, and she was spitting up mucus out of her throat. Not everybody's going to have, everybody can have different detox symptoms, and some people have different detox symptoms. I know for me, when I fast, I'm purging with my bowels, and I'm shedding things internally with inside myself and emotions come up on fast. So when you fast and you start getting angry, this anger has been inside you, been trying to release. So when you're fasting, the detoxification is not just physical. Emotions will come up, sadness will come up. Sometimes you might just feel sad when you're on a fast and you don't know why, because it's trying to come out of you and it's purging, trying to leave your system. And it has to be a self-love journey. So when you're doing a fast, you're telling yourself you love yourself. All right, before I get into the benefits, I do want everyone to write down something. If you have a journal, if you didn't get your notepad out, you should have your notepad out. So I'm gonna let everyone get their journal real quick. These are the four fasting keys and I'm gonna break it down. So please, everyone that has a journal and journals or that writes notes to themselves, this is the perfect time. This is the fasting keys. You know, you need to know this. If you're joining this class, you need to know this. Trusting yourself. Fasting key number one is trusting yourself. You have to trust yourself. You got to trust that you're doing it for your betterment. Yes, you can have family members telling you, oh, don't fast. It's not good for you. Uh, most of the time when people telling you to do not do certain things, those are those could be beings or th those people don't want you to see you in good health. And when you're in good health, you move differently. You look differently. You feel differently. They will tell you all types of things. You will die. Oh, my gosh. Don't do it, man. The people that told me I'm going to die. I'm still here. I can't make this up. I cannot make this up, especially when I'm, I went on a three day dry fast. No food, no water. Yes, it's a little bit extreme. I understand for some people that probably, like, oh, shit, I couldn't do that. Don't compare yourself to me. Competition is comparison. No competition. So I did a three-day dry fast, right? My spirit is telling me to do this, a three-day dry fast. When I did a dr three-day dry fast, the first day was light. And and one thing I do realize on fast, you have to be, okay, that's, that's, that's in for the next topic. So I trusted myself to go on a three-day dry fast. People were telling me, Oh man, corn! You're, you're getting telepathic. That's one. Of, that's one of the keys. That's one of the keys of fasting. I literally was gonna say keeping yourself busy, but um. All right, let me get. Let me finish trusting yourself. The first key of fasting, and you might have to read. You might have to edit this, bro. The first key on fasting is trusting yourself. Trusting yourself means that people, places, and things might tell you not to fast, but you told yourself you're gonna do it for a good amount of time. Set high expectations for yourself. Trust yourself to even begin your fast. So for me, right, I'm going to say to myself, yes, I'm a fast. I'm a water fast for two days. I might say that every week because I'm able to do it. So if you're a person that never fasted before in their life, set a goal for yourself. I'm, I'm not going to eat till this time. Set a goal. Trust yourself. Trust your body's intuition, not the parasites. 
You got to trust your soul, the inner guidance. It will guide you to the fast that's going to be most beneficial. The second thing is being happy. When you're on a fast and you start feeling emotions come up, that's when you start doing your self-love practices. That's when they're coming in clutch. So for me, when I'm not feeling the best on a fast, oh, I go right to breath work immediately. I get that natural high and I can give you a, a ski tip. When you do fast and you do breath work, right? It can feel like you just ate. When you do fast and you sun gaze and ground, you can feel like you just ate. If you if you're if you live by a body of water, putting your feet in that water, especially if you're Syrian, putting your feet in that water will make you feel like you ate. Taking a shower on a fast can make you happy. It can make you feel like you ate. You can literally have body stimulation, like your stomach will be cured of the growling and stuff like that, which is parasites. I'm gonna let you know. Your stomach can be cured by the growling by breathing into your stomach, taking a shower, rubbing your stomach. Let's everybody try this real quick. Clockwise or counterclockwise, see whichever feels best. For me, it's um, clockwise. If it's counterclockwise for you, that's okay. But just practice rubbing your stomach, warming up your hands, rubbing your stomach. This is a fasting key because a lot of things going on with the stomach and the guts and the colon. Just try doing this. It can feel good. Once you start feeling that warmth from doing this for a while, um, trust me, on a fast, you will need it. Smiling to your organs. I think someone needed to hear this. Smiling to your organs. Just smile to your organs. You can literally do that and feel like you ate. I promise you. I'm just learning, I'm, I'm promising you from my experience. From my experience, I know for certain, if you smile to your organs a little bit and rub, give some stimulation there, you'll start feeling better. Second key of fasting is resting. Resting when you feel like you need to rest. So... Meaning by that, you had a long day and you've been fasting. And now somebody, uh, for instance, somebody asked you to go go, um, go um, get something for them, right? Run to the store for them. That's when you like, no, I've been fasting. I need to go to bed. I need to go to bed. You got to tell them no. If somebody needs you to do something and you're not in the energy to do it, especially on a fast, do not overexert yourself. Because guess what that's going to do? It's going to bring up emotions dealing with, oh my gosh, I, I always help. You're going to be complaining. You're going to be complaining. You're going to be arguing and you're going to be debating. Those three things, you don't you want to stay away from. You don't want to complain with no one. You don't want to argue with anyone. And you don't want to debate with anyone. It doesn't matter if it's about the most positive topic ever. You doing this is energy, energetic leaks. When, when someone is trying to um, get you not to rest or when you're trying to fight resting on a fast, you're literally doing yourself a disservice. Sometimes when heavy emotions come up on a fast, that sometimes that can mean taking your taking your old self to bed, taking your ass to bed. I don't know why I had to say it like that, but when you have them heavy emotions on the fast sometimes, that means you need to take your ass to bed. Do not fight it. You need to go to bed and cry it out and go to bed. And I bet when you wake up, you're like, wow, I feel real good. I, okay, I, I'm going to get a little intimate, right? On one of my fasts one time, I did like, I was going on an 11-day fast, right? And when I broke my fast, right? It was very emotional for me when I broke my fast after 11 days. And it was water and tea and a little bit of fruit. But I only had fruit. So I went nine days. See, look, this is, look, I say I say I fasted 11 days, right, on water and tea. I had fruit towards the end of the fast. So nine days, I went hard and I did, I made, I made it a love practice. And I loved myself the whole way through nine days, just water and tea. And I'm telling you this, right? Once I broke it on the day nine with fruit, I didn't get mad at myself. Maybe I was like, oh, I could have kept going. After I ate, I was like, oh, I could have probably kept going. But once I ate, I didn't get mad at myself. I just said, oh, my gosh. I said I was going to do this amount of days and I didn't get it. No, you don't do that. You don't do that. I remember one of them days, I really needed to rest that day. I really needed to rest that day. And I'm fighting it. I'm just trying to do stuff, right? I can't make this up. I felt so fatigued. I was like, okay, I have to go do something. I decided to, I was like, okay, I've been fasting for nine days. I'm gonna give myself grace. I'm gonna eat. I ate some dates. Once you listen to your body, your body will purge for you automatically. When I went to sleep, I was like literally stinking up the house. I was farting so much, but I had nothing in me for nine days. I ate a couple dates. Man, your body will detox. I swear to God. Your body will detox. I'm letting go of all the old gas, all the stagnant energy, letting it go. I'm just telling you, don't fight it. Do not fight your rest. You didn't, if I would have rested, I could have probably kept my fast going a little bit longer. But you can't be, you can't be upset when you don't complete that. Sometimes you mess up and that's okay. You got to realize that, oh, this is a self-love journey. When I mess up, 
That's only showing me, oh, I can do this next time. I know I could do it. It wasn't too bad. You know, you can say that to yourself. Like, it wasn't too bad doing it for this long. I did break it, but I can continue right now. As soon as I'm done. You got to think about it like that. Every time you don't eat, you're fasting. Make it easy. Make it easy. Make it simple. You don't, don't complicate it. Are you eating right now? If you're, if you're not eating right now, you're fasting. We're fasting together right now. You're fasting. We're fasting together. You're fasting with me right now. But once you stop eating, you're fasting. Make it simple. Make it simple. <sighs> All right. And the last one is keeping yourself busy. Keeping yourself busy is essential on a fast. And the reason why I'm going to say it's essential, we've been such so ingrained to eat food. As soon as you're done the oatmeal, Leah, you're fasting. Don't complicate. It. Don't complicate it. It's not a competition. No comparison. You're doing great. So, being busy, keeping yourself busy is a fasting key. And the reason why it's a fasting key is because if you actually set up a schedule for yourself, especially on a fast, your brain will occupy yourself on doing other things besides eating. I'm going to let you know this. When we, when we um fast, right, you notice how much time you go into your kitchen just to open it. I'm just looking. You're not going to eat anything. You're on a fast. You know you're on a fast. But you go in there just to look. Like, what do you got in there? Like, you didn't check already like five, six times that same day. You know what's in your kitchen. You know what's in your fridge. But on a, you just notice how much time we spend thinking about food. You think about food much more than you actually eat. So sometimes people spend hours and hours just thinking about food or just scrolling through social media thinking about food. If you're doing that, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna be really hard for you on your fast. You're gonna be really upset. You're gonna see all the food and you're like, wow, I wanna eat, I wanna eat. No, if you told yourself no, Keep, keep it going as long as you can. When you say no to something, you're saying yes to something else. You're saying yes to your better health. Also, keep yourself busy. You actually have more energy when you're fasting because you're not thinking about food. So now you can apply it to other things. The programming of food. The programming of food. So the programming is, oh, once you get home from school or something, right? You could be in college. You could be in high school. You could be wherever. And as soon as you get home from school, you're, you're immediately thinking about food and just eating. School kept you busy. You, you might not like eating at school. School kept you busy. I'm just speaking from my experience from when I went to school. When I used to go to school, I didn't eat any of the food. I didn't want to eat the food. When I got home, that's when I ate. I was so busy in school, I didn't want to eat the food. I was good. So just think about that. Um, when you're really busy and stuff, you don't got time for food. And you're still feeling good. You might drink some water here and there. But again... You're fasted. You're in your natural state. As soon as you plug into this matrix or whatever you call, and as soon as, as soon as we stop drinking from our brother, um, our mother's milk or drinking formula or whatever, that's when you start getting hunger because that's the one of the first things we ate. So as soon as you plug into this matrix, you already have a hunger sensation, and it's for your mother's love most of the time. A lot of people have a lot of traumas with food, body image issues. I'm feeling right now is somebody's like, "Oh, well, fasting made me anorexic." No, it won't, because fasting is a self love practice. There's a difference between anorexia. There's a difference between anorexia and fasting. Anorexia. People that are anorexic and have eating disorders, they are depressed. They do not feel good within themselves already. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're going to we're gonna talk about how you can feel better. You have to feel better. Yes, you do. And when you feel better, it won't be an eating, it won't be an eating disorder. Again, like I was trying to tell you guys, you thinking hate, hate, hateful thoughts about yourself is more damaging to your body than not eating itself, the self-love journey. So on fasting, on the other hand, fasting is self-love journey. It's because that you're telling yourself you're doing it because you're trying to love yourself. You're doing it because you love yourself. You're doing it for the betterment of your health. You're doing it for the betterment of your life. You're doing it for the betterment of your reality. How to, how to curb hunger sensation. All right, depending on what type of fast you're doing, right? First thing I'm gonna recommend is deep belly breathing automatically. So let's all do it together. We're going to take nine breaths. I'm going to count it out. Ready? You're becoming the sun. Two. You're feeling brand new. You're at peace. Breath gives you more. Feeling heaven. Eight. Feeling great. Nine. Feeling divine. Take a last breath in. Ten. The breath is your friend. Now take one more breath in and hold it in your stomach. Push your belly out. Push your belly out. Push your belly out. Rub. Rub your stomach. And relax. Easy way you can stimulate your stomach. That's a quick way you can stimulate your stomach is rubbing your belly, getting, and a lot of people have stomach knots. I, you, you, it's a good way you can find out if you have a stomach knot right now, but I'm gonna wait because they tell, yeah. All right, let's get to the actually why you're fasting. We fast to get more connected to source. Whether we know that or not, when you're not eating anything, you're feeding off a source. When you're not eating anything, you're feeding off a source. I'm gonna repeat this again. 
When you're not eating anything, you're, feed, you're feeding off of source. You're feeding off of God. That is nourishing you. God is nourishing you when you're not eating anything. So praying while you're fasting, super beneficial. You can pray for God for spiritual food. Yes, you can. And when I say you can pray to God for spiritual food, leave your mind alone. Don't keep thinking, no, I can't. I have to eat. No, you don't. You can do one day of not eating or one day of drinking water or one day of eating fruit. I believe in you. You can do it. Believe in yourself. Trust yourself that, oh, one day or 12 hours is not going to kill you. It's actually going to do you a lot better for your life. And you actually can change your reality much faster. So if you feel disconnected from God's source, even yourself, if you feel connected, disconnected from God's source or even yourself, fasting can bring you back into balance. Since you're not consuming anything, you're receiving direct energy from the divine. If you have been stagnant in your meditation, if, you're med if your meditation hasn't been progressing, this is for the people that do breath work, that do meditation, that do that do yoga. If you feel like you've been stagnant in your practice, fast and then do your practice, I promise you, it's gonna be a whole different experience, whole different experience. So sometimes this is what you can do. I'm gonna give you another tip, another tip. Um, When you fast and you set up, oh, I'm about to do a one day of fasting, right? And if you know what time you usually eat a day for like most people, it's like, oh yeah, I eat at 12. I eat lunch at 12, right? You could substitute that substitute that for a practice, a spiritual practice. I might have to add that to my keys. Like I'm about to make a bigger list of keys. You can substitute eating for something else. So I'm gonna give you an example. I eat at 12 usually for lunch. I'm gonna give you an example. I don't eat at 12 for lunch, but the example purpose is I eat at 12. Now, at 12, I'm doing yoga. I'm doing breath work. I'm doing qigong. I'm exercising. You can literally substitute it. And when you do that, you can actually get deeper with your practice because now you're doing it for spiritual food. You're trying to get nourishment from God. That is a whole different level of devotion that you have you're going to you're going to feel. You're going to be like, "Whoa, I didn't know my practice can feel this deep." <sighs> Try it. You can literally if you if your meditation progress has been stagnant, your yoga progress has been stagnant. Your spiritual development has been stagnant. Fast. Fast and journal. Fast and pray. Fast and meditate. I bet your experience will be tra more transcendent because why you're feeding off source directly. All right. When you fast, you become more sensitive to people, places, and things. And when I say that, right, when you fast, you become more sensitive to people, places, and things. You see what charges you like a battery and you see what drains you. You see what charges you like a battery. You're so sensitive now because you've been fasting a little bit more. You've been fasting more each week. Now you become more energy sensitive. Now, when you feel energy, you're like, whoa, this is draining me. I can feel it. This is legitimately draining me. I didn't eat anything. So now when you're fasting, you're become more aware of your energy. <sighs> become more aware of your energy while you're fasting. You'll notice if a person, place, or thing is draining you much faster you will learn it much quicker. So if I go around someone, right, they might've had a bad day or something, right? Or whatever, right? Since I'm fasting, I'm more energy sensitive. So now I'm, you have to be more cautious to go around people and places. If, and sometimes you might not want to tell people that you're even fasting. Just don't, don't let, don't, don't, you don't got to let everybody know what you're doing. Cause some people have mothers and and fathers that they know that they're fasting. They're going to like, eat, Eat me, ho. Eat me, ha. Huh? I just know from my experience because I've dealt with friends and family that do that. They be like, "You better eat. You better eat." I'm trying to get better. I somebody got mamas or somebody got some people that be like, "Yo, they figure you tell them you're fasting." They're like, "No, you need to eat. You need to eat." You go be like, like you now you're throwing me off at this point. You're throwing me off. And when you get thrown off on your fast. You're getting drained. The negative emotions. You can fast from negative emotions. Like, I'm getting really energy sensitive now. It might be the negative emotions that's getting to the people. Fasting from negative emotions. Like, let's write this down. Um, I'm going to do a fast where I'm not going to complain, debate, or argue. I'm not going to do any of those things for a couple days. See how you feel. Catch yourself. When you're about to complain, debate, or argue. You can literally fast on things. Um, you can fast, phone fast. Get simple. Get simple. When you fast for something, you're abstaining from it for purposes of connecting deeper to yourself. A silent fast. I did a silent fast before. Silent fasting is when you, I didn't speak for a day and I felt my energy get super high. Everybody everybody wanted to talk to me that day too. It's funny. The day I chose to do a silent fast, everybody and their mama wanted to talk to me. So get simple. Just think simpler or simpler and you're going to find source. If you want to astral project faster, this is, this is how I got into astral. This is how I got deeper into astral projection. Two, I'm gonna give y'all two keys on how I got into astral projection. I fasted, breath work, and prayer. That's it. That's how I astral projected. I fasted, 
And guess what I did? I breathed to my belly, took a deep breath in, held my, held the air in my belly, pushed my belly out, squeezing my abs. I went out of body. And it was only like a, um, I did it multiple times, but like when I first went out of body, it was on a fast. All right. So if you're trying to astral project and you're struggling with astral projection, you're struggling with vivid dreams, fast. You're struggling with vivid dreams. You're struggling with astral projection. You're, struggl you're struggling with lucid dreams. You're not remembering anything. It's, you're going to sleep and it's black and you're waking up. You're like, wow, I just I just wasted rest. I didn't get no dreams or anything. Fast. Don't consume anything. Do your spiritual practice instead of consuming food. Let's see how you feel. Fasting, prayer and breath work those are the three things and if you can do that consistently no no, no. okay it's four it's, it's actually four keys four keys four keys now we're going to make five keys matter of fact trusting yourself resting keeping yourself busy and keeping yourself happy and the law of substitution the fifth one is substitution why i'm saying substitution you can literally substitute certain things and certain habits you can substitute eating sometimes for doing a session of breath work and your body will enjoy that you can you can even do that with water sometimes. So for so for someone that's like struggles with intermediate fasting, it doesn't have to be, it can be unintentional. You don't got to try. That's the best type of fast. You didn't even try. And then once you become conscious of it, continue it. Now see if you can continue it with some consciousness. So I, I see a lot of people fast unintentionally, right? Then you realize like, well, I didn't eat all day. Try to continue. Once you become conscious of it, continue. Matter of fact, I'm going to stop saying fasting at this point and let's see if everybody can keep up natural state this is your natural state you don't have to eat all the time you don't eating is pleasurable you don't have to eat all the time and we eat more than what we need to eat so our natural state when you're in your natural state you're not eating anything so guess what less toxin we have less toxins in your body less toxic behavior it's all connected the less toxins you have in your body, the less toxic behavior you have. The less toxins in your body, the less toxic behavior you have. The less parasites you have, the less parasitic behavior you have. The less parasites you have, the less parasitic behavior you have. The less heavy metals you have in your body, the less heavier you feel. All connected. Work with the energy. Work with the energy. So let me answer these questions real quick. Substitute to help you with your attachment. Yes. When you substitute, you're literally helping yourself with your attachment to something. You're letting go. You're letting go of something old in the way you used to do it. You're building a better relationship. And now, now when you do come back to eating or doing that, you have a better relationship with your food. If you're not praying over your food, if you're not giving your food good energy, you're already missing out anyway. So look, another way you can improve your fast, right? Don't eat for a day. And then when you eat, you 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 bless your food with all your heart. And I bet that food will be more nourishing than you ever experienced. Can everybody actually challenge themselves? Challenge themselves, but challenge yourself in a trusting manner. It's about to be five. I mean, it's 555 right now. Can everybody comment what time they're in right now, right? One day. I challenge you one day of not eating. One day. You can screenshot this time right now. One day of not eating. You can drink water. Let's every, everybody can go on a liquid fast together. Let's all do it one day. One day. Let's drink water. One day. One day. One day. I'll even do a breath work class tomorrow just so I can help you guys on your fast. And I'm gonna ask you guys questions too. Like y'all, you're almost there. One day. I started up a fasting group too, but that's that's later for a different type of conversation. One day day and i will do a breath work class just so we can i'll do a breath work class and teach some breath work specifically to help with your hunger cravings one day you can drink water just don't eat for one day one day you can drink water you can drink smoothies tea is not no 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 only thing that's gonna be nothing's prohibited at all you do what you please I, i'm gonna let you know that right now i'm not telling you 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 don't you have to do this you don't have to do this i want to see y'all get better as a star sea tribe so I know everybody that's resonant with this, one day, one day of tea, one day of water, one day of not eating. Let's see how deep your meditation can get. Let's see. Do your same spiritual practices you do every day. One day. Do the same spiritual practices you do. You don't, yeah, you don't have to come to breath work practice. That's fine. But just one day. You should write this down. Journal it. See how you feel throughout your day. And then if it's easier, you're like, wow, this wasn't even that bad. But four fasting keys. Let's get the four fasting keys out the way. Somebody write them again. Trusting, keeping yourself busy, and keeping yourself happy. Oh, five keys, my bad. Five keys. And the law of substitution. So literally, somebody write this down. Resting, 
keeping yourself busy, keeping yourself happy, and substituting. When we do this one day fast together, we're making big shifts in our life. We literally all fed for source for one day. We are already on day one. All we gotta do is keep it going. And if it's getting closer to um like later for you to go to sleep, you already almost done. Now you gotta make it back to the same time you started. And when you do eat food, pray over your food. Or if you don't pray, just give it good energy. I bet you can be like, wow, that one day, it wasn't too bad. And if it was, it was a little bit harder for you for that one day. You're gonna, you'd be so grateful for that food. You're gonna thank God for just blessing you with that food, that nourishment that you felt like you needed. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. And I'm also going to be, I want you guys to see this. Did you know three to four months for gluten to be removed from the body? Alcohol, eight days. Coffee, three weeks. Sugar, two weeks. Meat, two to three months. Dairy, three weeks. Oils, up to six months. So a little here and there constantly is always slowing down your healing journey. Do not be discouraged. When you fast, I'm going to let you know this now. When you fast, you increase the rate things leave your body. So look. I just felt someone get upset. No, 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 no. It's alkalizing. Okay, what is alkaline? You can search this up, guys. No disease, including cancer, can exist in the alkaline environment. Dr. Otto Warburg, 1931 Nobel Prize winner for cancer discovery. And this is what I said. No disease can't be cured. I don't give a fuck what y'all heard or what your doctor said. But that's just the truth in me. I cannot go against my truth. Alkaline, alkalize the body. Love is alkal alkalizing. Laughter boosts your immune system. Hugs boost your immune system. Sharing boosts your immune system. Smiling boosts your immune system. Hate is acidifying. One minute of hate weakens your immune system for five, four to five hours. Guess what else can weaken your immune system? Debating can weaken your immune system. Arguing can weaken your immune system. And complaining. When you complain about things, you are weakening your immune system. No, I'm not saying don't express how you feel. There's a difference between expressing how you feel and complaining. Complaining is things that's in your power to change and you, you're not changing it. That's complaining. If it's in your power to change it and you're not changing it, now you're just complaining. But if you're telling someone how you feel, that's not complaining. Please don't get it misconstrued. And... When you're on that fast, everybody says everybody's going to be on a one-day fast together. That's ground. I feel like we're well past this. We're well past this in this community. What people think it does, nothing. Okay, we're past this. We know what we know what ground it can do. Is this, the, these tips are making your fast easier. All these tips are making your fast easier. You can literally pray and breathe for spiritual food. Right now, we need food to sustain our lives. Physically, we need material food. But we must nourish our subtle energy bodies as well. You got to nourish your spirit and your soul bodies. The energies of, of our virtues, the universe, the stars, and the planets provide a, spirit, a source of spiritual food. We are trained to depend on our religious beliefs to provide this nourishment. Spiritual food is actually all around us. Everything is spiritual, so everything is spiritual food. We just have to be taught how to absorb it and digest it. Taoism offers... Okay, it doesn't matter about Taoism. I'm just letting you know it doesn't matter about the isms. The isms doesn't matter. We're going to take the overall message. A means by which we can access these energies and cultivate the soul and spirit and enhance our total being. You see, he's trying to get energy from the stars, the sun, the trees, the mountain, and all of that's coming from God. Praying to God for spiritual food. If you feel the most worst hunger pains, pray. Breathe and pray. Spiritual leaders train us how to absorb these food, these forces, uh, these forces in the form of God. The best times to get up during the day. You can get better food, different types of food that you need. If you're up during 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., you're getting that ultraviolet food. The different types of spectrum of light, just like the different colors of food. You can get, you can eat all of these different types of spectrum of light. I don't believe anybody is fat, or, but I do believe that you're extremely backed up. Why I say backed up? Poland can hold 10 to 20 pounds of shit. Yes, shit, doo doo, poop. Not forget about me. One of the biggest causes of disease, mucus in the colon. You may not realize it, but you're overworking your body. Your body has too much waste in the colon that is zaps your energy. Plus, you're still eating after you know you're backed up. Eating backed up, your body has to work extra hard to remove the waste while you're still accumulating more waste. All right, now I'm done talking about the problem. What's the solution? Solution one. Start breathing to your belly more. You can stimulate your digestive system and you can start using the bathroom more frequently. Solution two. Stop late night eating. All right, and I showed you guys that because some people think probably thinking that they're obese or fat when that's not true. You can see 
The lighter you eat, how it affects your spirit slash soul and become more connected to it. Progress. It is not an overnight process. Fasting is when you're working with the light, but the light can be so powerful, it can blind, right? So understand this. One day of fasting will not hurt you. But if you try to go extreme and try to do one month, and you never fasted the day before, yes, it will hurt you because you weren't being honest with yourself. You must be honest with yourself. And you have to be, not have to be, but you should be at least challenging your own belief saying, can I fast for one day? And if you have, if you keep hearing no in your brain, that's the parasite not trying to have you change. It's one day and you can drink water, you can drink soup, you can have soup if you really wanted to. Just no eating. Stop chewing for one day. Make it simple. You don't even got to say I'm fasting. I'm not chewing for one day. Say that. If somebody asks you, what are you doing? I'm not chewing today. Okay, now look, if anybody that sun gazes uh, or scared of sun gaze. Do you believe me that Google says that if you stare at the sun for two minutes you straight, energy you go blind the for the rest of your life? I think it's been two minutes and you've been staring and been, at the sun And I've been doing it for five or six years, wow. a couple hours a day. It's euphoric. Uh, you get vitamin D, vitamin A, melatonin, melanin. Um, serotonin and dopamine released from staring at the sun so staring at the sun cannot hurt your eyes or make you blind everyone is uh brainwashed that that the sun would hurt their eyes so do you think i'm losing out on vitamin d wearing sunglasses right now i don't think you're losing, missing out i know you are uh oh. people that wear sunglasses the uh the eyes are covered from the sun the eyes are covered and it tricks the brain into thinking that there's no sunshine the brain doesn't release the chemicals vitamin d vitamin a melatonin all the things that your body needs to be healthy. All right, the last slide I want you guys to see. The power of adaptability, the law of adaptation. This is, I like to call it the law of adaptation. The power of adaptability is one of, is one of the ever-present facts of living existence. Men live in every climate and are subject to all kinds of influences and indulge in every sort of habit, okay? Before he gets, before I get deeper, right? Habits eventually turn into lifestyles and lifestyle eventually turns into your reality. So habits can turn into lifestyles and lifestyles turn into reality. So people say something about, oh, what diet should I do? What, what this, what that, right? With diets, I'm never going to recommend a diet. I'm going to recommend a lifestyle change and you don't have to make it an extreme lifestyle change. No, no, no. I like to do things simplified. Don't make an extreme lifestyle change, but make a lifestyle change. Make a small one. That could be cutting out overly processed food that you know that's like no good for you. That got 70 ingredients in it. You know, um, choosing the healthier, like a, a good, a good um lifestyle change is choosing the healthier snack over the bad snack when you have a chance to choose. That could be a healthier lifestyle that, oh, I, every time I get a choice between a healthier snack and a bad snack, I choose the healthier snack every time. That's my lifestyle now. That can be a thing. You don't have to make it hard. So if you don't have anything healthy and you had something that wasn't healthy, that's okay. But if you had a choice between the apple and the Takis, choose the apple. You know in your spirit, which one, you can't argue and debate any of this stuff. Men indulge in almost every sort of habit. It becomes very proverbial that habit is second nature. So we build up habits and lifestyles as second nature. We build up routines. For, that's another way to say it. What is another man's... What is one man's meat is, is another man's poison. With somebody, like, a, like you ever heard of, um, was one man's trash is another man's pleasure? Or, yeah, one, was one man's trash is another man's treasure? I said pleasure. What is one man's trash is another man's treasure? If you have a habit with eating some certain, eating certain ways, that could be poisonous to someone else. Okay, but I'm going to let you know this overall. Fasting is beneficial for all eating habits. I don't. All eating, all eating lifestyles. I mean habits. I'm gonna say habits. So for all eating habits and for the lifestyle purposes, it's beneficial to anybody because you're feeding off a source. But that that goes beyond, oh, I do this, I do this diet, this diet is better. No, I'm not debating or arguing anything. I'm just saying fasting is good. It doesn't matter what you do, it fasting is good. The evidence is hourly apparent that man may become accustomed to almost anything, shooting or hanging. No matter how repugnant, destructive the substance may be, we first endure it, then embrace it, providing time given to secure the efficient operation of the body's balance wheel. Basically, what he's saying is you can literally adapt to anything. And people usually adapt to the more negative things of life. They don't even know it. So we, if we can adapt to anything, let's adapt gradually to something healthier, whereby is prevented violence, violent swaying of the vital activity.
from one extreme to the other. If it is sudden and violent changes that become immediately destructive to the body, even sometimes it is a change from a good, bad to good. Okay, remember when I was talking about detox symptoms? So pretend, not pretend, you detoxing, right, one day, right, or de you doing a fast for two days, right? You you're, or doing a water fast for two days, your nose might start running. If you're doing a fruit fast for a week or three days, your nose might start running. You might feel a little sick because it's a change to the body and your body has to adapt. Because a habit does not seem to be immediately destructive, it's not proof it is beneficial or harmless. The secondary effects are real and lasting effects. The bearing of the law of vital adjustment, I like to call it of adaptation. Bearing the law of... Uh, be uh, all all. Bearing of the law of adjustment on many important questions is evident. Any discussion on the subject of food and drink and treatment of those as addictions to to uh, to the use of liquor or alcohol, opium, food involves this law. It is lack of knowledge in this respect. Yeah, foods can be addictive. I just want everyone to know that foods can be addictive. It is lack of knowledge in this respect that has prevented the success of many reforms which had in the elements of great value and have been carried to success to change the issue all these changes man has all these changes in man's habits should be made with a distinct recognition to the fact of the vital accommodation so basically the the vital the law of adaptation so basically if I'm going to round this up a little bit, you can adapt to anything with give with the given amount of time and the given amount of consistency. You can either adapt to something good. You can say that you deem that's good and you can adapt to something that might be a little bit bad. And the last thing is you have to heal yourself. Everybody only can show you what healing work they've done on themselves. No one can actually heal you. You have to heal yourself. They might have information that can heal you, but you have to do something with the information. No one is going to save you. No one's going to rescue you from your inner demons, your lack of confidence. But I'm going to be there to support you so you can rise up to the occasion and rise up to be the person that you're destined to be. So smile and rejoice. Anything else I want to show? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, I do want to share a video too with you guys. One day of fasting, guys. One day. We're making big ripples in the universe if everybody can do it together. Big ripples. This is a self-love fast. We're not going to be hating on ourselves and saying, oh, man. So for anybody that just came in here, we're talking about fasting. And fasting connects you to source in a deeper level. It returns you to source because you're not eating anything. I remember on my fast, I'm just going to give you some fasting tips that I had. I had some hunger pains one time, right? And I'm at, I was on my 11-day fast, 11-day tea and water fast. And I had some hunger pains after like, I had hunger pains throughout it, but like I've been fasting for a while, so I'm able to deal with, deal with it a little bit more intensely. So I got to day nine. When I got to day nine, I'm going through it, guys. I'm fatigued. I'm getting almost irritated. And then my guy was like, okay, you need to put your legs up on the wall and do some breath work. So what I did is put my legs up on the wall, put my hands on my belly, did some deep belly breathing. I want you guys to know that this, for the things to be removed from your body, right? When you fast or you drink water or you eat fruits for a longer time than what you eat other types of foods, this process becomes accelerated. So when you fast, it's not going to take two weeks for coffee to come out, three weeks for coffee to come out your system. It's, it might take a little bit shorter. Sugar, right? If you're doing um, a fruit fast, right? That old sugar might come out your system. If you do a fruit fast for four days, right? That same sugar will come out within that four days. You're, you're detoxing at a faster rate the different types of fast you can do. Fasting, a uh, elevates the detoxification process you detox at a much faster rate when you fast so remember this when you fast you detox at a faster rate all right has anybody has any, any questions about fasting please put your hand up and i get you up on stage and we can talk and if you want me to recommend you a certain type of fast to do depending on your guidance or the, your spirit guidance i can do that they recommend a fasting plan? all right two things i'm gonna say is your emotions is is you have a lot of emotional connections to food. They're telling me intermediate fasting. So maybe if you were trying to go push for the day fast, you might have got really upset with yourself if you didn't fully follow it. So set a goal for yourself for today. Achieve that goal. And once you achieve it, thank the source, thank God, whatever you believe in, thank that, and then have your nourishment as food. So don't be...
yourself up over if you try to do a whole day fast and you didn't get it. Honor that you even got that far to do it. And I bet the next time you'd be like, yo, I can actually do a day. So intermediate fast, Betty, for do it as long as you can. And I I think I did intermediate fasting without realizing when that um because uh, this one time uh, when my mother came home, she was like, what did you guys eat? And we was like, oh, we only ate this one thing. And then she got angry, like, oh, my gosh. I can't believe you just only ate this one thing. 